Hi there, here's a, a short video to show a change I just made to make it easier to handle uh, duplication of materials for custom font assets for TextMesh Pro. Now, why would you care to do that? Well, it's pretty simple. Let's say you have this uh, text object here and you wanted to make a copy of it uh, that would have like a different treatment on it, a different texture, or maybe you just want this copy to become a shadow. Right now I'm using the Vertex Lit uh, shader or distance field shader for text mesh pro and since it's vertex lit it doesn't cast shadows uh, so in this case we want to create a fake shadow so the way I do that is I uh, have my object selected I hit control D to create a duplicate drag the duplicate here <clears throat> that's just to allow us to see it uh, more easily uh, I would go to our material on the duplicate and right click and this new contextual menu shows up it says duplicate material I click duplicate we get a duplicate of the material it's automatically assigned and that's it so now um, we talked about a shadow so I'll go here change the face color of the object to black make it semi-transparent make the border go away increase softness so we can make it soft like a shadow drag it back over here and sort of manually uh, add an offset and there we go so now we quickly and easily created a shadow for this object and that's how simple it is um, now a few and that's pretty much it for I guess the simple part of the video now in the second part of the video if you care to listen as to why I made that change and uh, and how it made it easier uh, here's the explanation <clears throat> TextMesh Pro uses a custom uh, font asset, which is basically a scriptable object that contains uh, the information about the font itself, which is what the font is, Arial, the point size, the line height, and so on and so forth. It also includes uh, the font data, which is where each letter is inside of the font atlas, as well as the kerning table. It has information about the font itself in terms of um, what's the weight of normal text, how bold is bold, and what's the slant on italic. But in addition, this main scriptable asset has two other assets, sub-assets attached to them. One of them is the font atlas and the other one is the material that is referencing this font atlas. Now I added those as sub-assets because I didn't want for every single font to end up having three files which is the scriptable object, the texture and the material because as you added more fonts you'd end up with more and more files and managing those was getting kind of messy. Now what I wanted to do is treated the same way that Unity treats their fonts, which is if we look at Arial here, this is a font object in Unity. It's a scriptable object. You can open this little fold out here and then you can see the sub assets, which are the material and the font texture. Well, there's, uh, I, I reported it to Unity. I believe it's a bug, but, and they said they were able to duplicate it. But it turns out that if you take a scriptable object and you attach or as a sub asset or sub object, a material and a texture, instead of doing this little fold out like we got here with a scriptable object, we ended up with it, another new object that's an empty object to which the scriptable object was parented as well as the texture and the material. Um, so they've acknowledged that they can reproduce it. Now they haven't said if they're going to fix it, if they consider it a bug or not. It's kind of goofy that it acts that way, but oh well. But anyway, the problem with, um, so having said that, all my assets and my texture and my material are a sub-asset of the main font, which keeps the font hierarchy clean and you delete that one file and everything's gone, which is nice. But when it came time to just duplicating the material, because it's a sub-asset, although I can change it, I can't access it. I can't drag it somewhere else. I can't right click and copy or do any of these things because it's embedded in there. So one way that we were cheating or doing this is we would simply duplicate the whole custom font asset. Now the problem with by doing that is you end up with a duplicate of the texture, a duplicate of the material, and a duplicate of all the font data, which you know it's a lot of waste you know for no reason. Um, one nice advantage of using distance field is our texture atlas can be very small like 256 by 256 or 512 by 512 and still deliver super pristine quality at any size. Well now if you wanted different treatments for that same font 
having to duplicate this material sort of, like I said, is a huge waste. So now the new trick is you can simply get a duplicate of the material. You can name it, like in this case, I'll call it shadow. And now it makes the whole thing more manageable. I, sh I should have called it aerial shadow or whatever, but now it, it's much simpler. Um, just to show, you know, uh, another side thing um, in here, uh, let's see, um, I need to figure out which one's the shadow. I hope it's this one, yes. So let me get rid of the shadow and delete it. Go back to the main font, uh, create another duplicate, go here, uh, make another duplicate of this material, um, change its color just for the sake of, of it, and show one quick thing. So let's say this font is Arial with this new material, which is the, the new one we created. Um, what if I go here and I change the font from Arial to Snap It? Well, obviously it changes to Snap It, but what happens when I go back to the Arial font? Well, when I go back, hey, we're back to this one up here, which is still referencing the original one. Well, the behavior is pretty straightforward to understand is whenever you go back to the main font asset, we default back to the main material and texture that's being referenced in that. Now, if you wanted to go back and reassign the shadow to it, I simply select it, take my shadow, drag it back here, or take the other one that's the green one and put it there. So that's the only thing to keep in mind whenever you switch back and forth from font to font, it defaults back to what the default material was in that font. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed the video and everything made sense. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, feel free to post. Thanks for watching again. Bye-bye.